Hi, and welcome to this video here. In this one, we're gonna take uh, three resistors, 10 ohms each, and we're gonna talk about whether if I was looking to get power, I would wanna connect them in a Y configuration, or I wanna to wanna to connect them in a delta configuration. So we're gonna take a look at the math behind connecting these three resistors in Y or delta, and see which one actually just gives us more power and talk about why. So what I've drawn here is I've got my Y connected resistors and I've got my delta connected resistors. Now keep in mind, we're just gonna pretend these are all 10 ohms each. I go into a bucket, I find three 10 ohm resistors. I'm going to connect them and I wanna know how much power I'm gonna get out. Which way am I gonna get more power and is it different in what way, in Y or in delta? Now I've just picked a pretty common source here. So I said we have a 120, 208 volt source. So let's start by talking about the Y connected, uh, Y connection. So in that Y connection, right, I would of course have all these conductors going up to my source. Now, in this connection, I would have 208 volts line to line, right? And I would have 120 volts here on the phase, right? Now, when we're, when we're doing calculations and we're talking about current, and we're talking about power, we can calculate right inside that phase. So when I'm trying to figure out my current, I wanna calculate my phase current. That's gonna be my phase voltage divided by my resistance inside the phase, right? Which of course here is 120 volts divided by 10 ohms. That's gonna give me a phase current of 12 amps. Now we wanna think back to everything we know about Y connected circuits as well. We know of course that, you know, my V line equals V phase times root three, right? We also know that I line equals I phase. Those are my fundamental relationships in a Y connected circuit. So with that being said, if my I line equals my I phase, here where I wrote 12 amps, well, yes, it's my I phase, but it is also my I line. I just have to make sure when I'm calculating it, I'm using that phase voltage because that's the actual voltage across the load or across the resistor. Now we're just gonna jump into our, our big formula here. What did we came to talk about? We came to talk about power. So there's one formula that is crucial in three phase when calculating three phase power, and that is that my power three phase power is my line voltage times my line current times square root of three times my power factor. Now, of course, when we're talking about resistors, our power factor equals one. Power resistors have a unity power factor or a power factor of one. So my watts and my volt amps will be the same. My watts and my VA are the same. But I'm gonna take that formula, I'm gonna go uh, power, three phase equals 208 volts times 12 amps times root three times one, my power factor. And if I were to connect my resistors this way, I would get 4,323 watts. I'd also get 4,323 VA because my watts equal my VA. Now, when I come over to my delta connection, right? So that's how many we get over here. Now, when I get to my delta connection, what changes? Well, we still have those fundamental rules, although they change in delta. Now, we gotta remember, how would this be connected? Well, this would be connected. I would have line up and line up. So here, I would have 208 volts from line to line. I also have a phase voltage of 208 volts there. Now that's what we see in delta is we see that our V line equals our V phase, right? Those are the same. Okay, great. Now, when we go to calculate that, well, okay, let's say, okay, I wanna figure out what is my current flowing through one of those resistors. That would be my I phase. So I'm gonna go V phase divided by resistance in the phase. Now, in this case, I go 208 divided by 10. 208 volts divided by 10 amps. That gives me a phase current 
of 20.8 amps. Now we already see an increase. We see an increase when I had them in Y, I got 12 amps. When I have them in Delta, I get 20.8. That's a root three difference. We see that because of the voltage. My phase voltage in Delta is root three higher than my phase voltage in Y. So I see a root three bigger current, right? We don't get current without the voltage. And Ohm's law tells us voltage is directly proportional to current. Now I also want to keep in mind that in delta, if I have a current here and a current here, Kirchhoff's current law tells us that my line current is the sum of those two phase currents. So my line current is actually my phase current times root 3. Now that rule, I just want to put a little reminder that that only works in a balanced delta circuit. Because these are all three resistors, all a power factor of 1, impedance of 10, this is considered a balanced circuit. Um, so now what we want to do is say, okay, if my I phase is 20.8 amps, my I line is going to be 20.8 times root 3, it actually gives me 36 amps. So this line current is much, much, much higher in delta than it was in Y. And let's see that how that affects our power. So same thing, I'm going to go power. Three phase is V line. I'm just going to put it in. 208 volts times 36 amps times root 3 times my power factor of 1. Again, using that same formula. Huge formula, we use it all the time. In this case, I get 12,000. 969 watts, which is the relationship. Um, I actually get, if I were to take the same resistors, and unlikely scenario, but connect it up in Y, connect it up in delta, I actually see a three times increase or 300% increase hooking it up in delta as opposed to Y, right? It's three times bigger. Uh, thanks so much for watching this video. I do hope it helped. Check out some links in the description below, which link to some other videos on a similar related topic. Um, thanks for watching. Have yourself a great day.